Question of the Week from the Naked Scientists. Hi, I'm Sam Brown, and this week we're looking at this question from Stuart. If you could bring a baby from the past to grow up in the present, how far back could you go before people would notice that this was a time-travelling baby? <laughs> professor Robert Foley, Leverhulme Professor of Human Evolution at Cambridge University, provided us with this answer. In evolutionary timescales, the answer is not very far. If we start the clock of human evolution at around 5 million years ago, when we split from our last common ancestor with chimpanzees, then probably up to around 200,000 years ago, we would begin to see quite big differences. Before that, not only would the babies look different, but they would grow more rapidly and develop faster. So being shorter and hairier, we might be able to pick them from a crowd. Hey, uh... But what about behaviourally? Would they be able to function in today's society? We don't know enough in detail about their behaviour to say if they would stand out today. They would have probably learnt to speak, but perhaps not with the range of syntax and vocabulary we have. An interesting reason why we can't be sure is that while people 200,000 years ago might not have had a developed language like us, it could be that they would have had the mental capacity to learn it in a modern cultural setting. We would probably have to go back to over half a million years ago to find them not speaking at all, perhaps the trait that would be most noticeable. It's a good question and echoes one I ask students. If we found a living Neanderthal child, should he or she be put in a school or a zoo? Probably school. But what about earlier modern ancestors, such as Homo erectus from one million years ago, or Australopithecines at three million? Fascinating stuff and another tricky question to finish off with too. But our forum users had even more to add. Halk suggests that one of the biggest challenges facing this time-travelling infant would be growing up in the first place. He says the baby will not have the benefit of the last, say, million years of perpetual evolution between us and the stuff that's trying to kill us. The baby would have a hard time growing up at all since all these diseases that have bred to prey on humans will find the baby fairly defenceless. Well, we better start working on some vaccines alongside that time machine then. Next week, we'll be weathering the storm of uncertainty to answer this question from Norwich-based electrical engineer, Daniel. My question to the team is, why jet engines, the type you see on almost every commercial aeroplane with the large forward-facing fan blades, are not used on the aeroplanes that are sent to investigate hurricanes? These still use propellers, albeit that these may be driven in some way by a jet engine. Is it that propeller engines are safer in high-stress situations? What do you think? You can email chris at thenakedscientist.com, find us on Facebook, tweet at Naked Scientists, or join the debate on our forum, nakedscientists.com forward slash forum. Thank you for listening, and until next time, goodbye.